Hello guys, and thank you for listening or watching another episode of Live Free Podcast. This is our Kingdom Business segment this week, and I'm getting on here because I'm going to give my testimony, as you can see from the thumbnail, my testimony for um, when I bought my first home. And God has been on me. I was going to do it next week, but uh, he's pressing me to do it now. So I'm going to go ahead and give you my testimony of my first home. I'm super excited because, you know, when we testify, you know, of the goodness of God, that just simply lets us know that God wants to do it again. He wants to duplicate it and he wants to release that same blessing and that same favor and that same anointing upon his children. Okay. So what I'm doing today, I'm just giving a testimony look, and this is a testimony from my first home. I've bought two homes and, and I've had supernatural intervention with both. So this is going to be the testimony for the first home. So the Bible says in Revelations 12 and 11 um, that the order of our testimony is powerful, right? It's very powerful. And it reads, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. According to Revelations 12 and 11, what does the word testimony means? I know we know what we think the meaning is, but I'll just read what the Webster dictionary says it is. So a testimony is evidence or proof provided by the existence or appearance of something. It is basically, it is a public recounting of a religious conversation or experience. Believe it or not, that's what the dictionary says. So what I'm going to be doing is just giving my testimony on the supernatural things that happened when I bought my first home. Let's get into it. So in this kingdom business segment, I'm here to encourage you, to exhort you, to um, give, provide information, you know, that would help you in the real estate process, or this may help someone else. So if you know of someone that is actually looking for a home or in, interested in investing in real estate, these things will absolutely be a help. I have provided a countless uh, shorts, YouTube shorts. And I think, honestly, the Holy Spirit gave me that, um, that strategy uh, because I was going to do videos, but then God just gave me a strategy just to put, you know, that way it's easier for people to absorb, you know what I mean? And it's easy to look at over and over and over again. So I implore you, if you haven't done it, just to look at the YouTube shorts and it's a questions about the, the process of buying a home from the beginning to the end, from real estate to financing to interior decorating. I'm going to continue to do those shorts um, and just continue to look at those. So let's get into it. So... When I began to write down my journey, and this is a journey back in 2002, that's when I actually purchased a home, but the journey actually started before then supernaturally. <clears throat> so back in 2001, 2001, I, um, I actually got a prophetic word from my pastor at the time. And I remember him saying, he, as he laid hands on me, you about to see the glory of the Lord explode in your life. He said, you about to see the glory of the Lord explode in your life. And I was like, oh my gosh, what could that possibly mean? You know, and I know God is already good, you know, but what does a glory explosion looks like? A lot of times when we think of the glory of the Lord, we think of the presence of God, which it is. And we think of the Shekinah glory or the cabal, you know, that's the weighted presence of God. But this particular glory was attached to finances and it was attached to materialistic things. And a lot of times as Christians, we don't believe that God speaks in that manner, but I'm here to tell you that his glory is a part of your financial advancement or the favor, I should say, of God on your life. So he said, you're about to see the glory of the Lord explode in your life. So time went past, nothing happened that was you know, out of the ordinary. Um, at that particular time, I got saved back in 2000. So it, what, ha what began to happen was a series of events. So all of the, the friends that I hung out with, including my sibling, we used to all go to the club together and all of that before we got saved. God started to save us like domino effects. Boom, 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 boom. One by one by one. And at that moment in this time, when this happened for me, we were all saved at the same time. And I'm talking about eating, drinking, and walking Jesus at every church service. We was just 
feeding off each other, edifying each other. It was such a glorious time to just see that not only you, but all of your friends that you used to club with, he hit us at different times in our lives, but it was so close together that we were all saved at almost at the same time. And it wasn't a thing because somebody else was doing it. You could really see the change and the glory of God on our lives. You could really see it. So I said all of that to say one of our friend's sisters at the time, we, we used to all get together on random occasions and uh, eat on Sundays after church and get together in fellowship and just talk about what God did and all that. And one of my uh, sis, uh, friend's sisters, she was with us at this particular time. She wasn't really a part of the group, but she hung out from time to time. And she had a powerful prophetic gift on her life. She's a prophet and she had a powerful prophetic gift. And so we used to all feed off each other, you know, and bless each other. So she prophesied over me. I was uh, actually at my sister's house. And at this time, my sister had already supernaturally acquired her a home. So at this time, God had transitioned me out of another church into this church, and we were all going to the same church. And then he had transitioned me into um, the house with my sister because I was uh, had a roommate at the time, which she got saved too, but I had a roommate at the time. And God had uh, spiritually positioned me out of a church and out of a location, right? Out of my apartment. And so what I did was um, I just didn't know at the time, you know, before I bought my house and I just uh, stayed with my sister until I decided what was my next move. So in this process, we were all in my sister's new house and we were all excited and how God moved on her behalf and, you know, just excited about anything. I wasn't looking for a house. I didn't ask for a house. I wasn't even praying for a house. So Bridget, which is what her name was, she prophesied. We were sitting in the bedroom. She was sitting on the floor against the window, and I was sitting on the bed, and my other friend was sitting there, and my sister and some other people. And so she, we were talking about my sister's house, and she looked at me, and she said, you next in line to get a house. And I was like, me? And she was like, yeah. I said, I'm like, I ain't been praying for no house. You know, I was like, well, why? I said, uh, she said, I got a word for you. She said, but I can't give you the word until, you know, you're not around a, one of my friends. And I, at that time, I'm thinking, well, why she can't say it around my friends? Baby, let me tell you something. You got to know who those that labor among you. Uh, she wasn't a bad person. And I was best friends with her for a long time. But it's certain things that God won't even release a word about what the things that he's doing in your life. And it's for a reason. It's because of so many things and thoughts that you don't hear. God knows people's thoughts and he knows their heart. And that's why I lay, let him lead me and guide me in my relationships. Because though you may have a love for a person and you may be super close. I mean, so, this was my roommate, actually, the person. Uh, but God supernaturally moved me out of there. And then I moved in with my sister. But we were still friends. You know, we still hung out for years after that. She even came to stay with me at my new house. But for some reason, she could not give that prophetic word to me in front of her. So she said, I'll tell you later or whatever. So she said, but you were next in line to get a house. And she kind of whispered that to me. And so she said, what I want you to do is I want you to write a letter to God telling him exactly, you know, what type of house you want. I want you to write a letter to him just stating, you know, you know, all the things that you will want in your house and what type of house you will want and just keep the letter. And I was like, okay, at that time, um, I think in 2001, I probably was making 30,000 a year or whatever, 33. I don't even remember. Um, but I know it wasn't a lot. But then in that day and time, you know, it was kind of a long time ago. You, you, it it would, didn't take a lot, you know, because housing, houses wasn't that expensive. So let me get into it. So she said, um, just write a letter. She said, but I, and I asked her, I said, how do you know? Now, this person has prophesied to me before and other things, and it has come to pass. When I tell you she was accurate and walking with the Lord, not just in accuracy only, but in lifestyle, totally amazing woman amazing um so she that's not the first thing she prophesied over my house which wasn't hard for me to i mean prophesied to me not over my house prophesied to me in terms of my direction and set, setting the course of my path with with the lord she's prophesied to me before a few times so it wasn't hard for me to accept or receive the word as well but I wasn't even asking God for a house, which that's why it threw me off. I was just celebrating that my sister had a house and we was all excited about that. And I was just, you know, thankful to God that I was able to live in it until I found another place to go, you know. And so 
um, she said, um, yeah, I want you to write the letter. So I wrote the letter and I asked her, I said, well, how did you know I was in next in line to get a house? She said, because when we were sitting there talking in the room, she said, when I was looking at you, I seen a house, a vision popped up and came up and it was a house in front of your face. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, and it's just nice to know how people know things and how do they get their revelation from God? So that was cool. So time went by, it was no big deal. Months, months went by, whatever, whatever. So um, at that time, we used to ride around, me and my friends, we used to ride around just to look at model homes because we loved doing it. They was decorated and pretty and we just rode around looking at model homes. So I seen one on TV. I think it was Atlanta Fine Homes where they show all the different homes on TV and the models and the new builders that's building homes that you can come in or whatever. And then they talked about um, all of the special financings and things that they had. So I knew on the weekend, I was like, oh, I, that'd be a cute model home to go look at. And it was by a lake and everything it was very pretty community, very pretty. And they were, you know, really not expensive. Well, at that time, it, it may have been, you know, not expensive, but it was, it was a good amount. So when I went to, decided to go and I just went, you know, not, God didn't say go. He didn't say any of that, but that was a feeling I just felt I should go, right? Didn't know how God was leading me to this. So... I went to the model home and on site, typically at the model homes, they don't have lenders on site. They don't have lenders on site. So this was kind of different because it was lenders there, uh, different lenders, Bank of America, different lenders as well as, because uh, it's, it's not natural that they'll have loan officers sitting there, you know? So that was different in and of itself. Plus you can go in and look at the model home. So that's what I did in this particular uh, time that I went, I think I went by myself. I don't remember, recall anyone going with me. So as I go to the Bank of America table, I'm standing there and I'm talking to a loan officer and uh, she's like, we can do pre-qualifications -pre like right now. And so just give me your stuff, you know, get your information and I can pull up a pre-qualified to see if you're pre-qualified. I was like, eh, I knew my credit score was like in a 580 range and you know, I didn't have any money or anything like that. So I was just like, okay, you know, so I did the pre-qualifications. She's like, oh, you pre-approved. I was like, what? She was like, yeah, you're pre-approved. Um, you know, so then um, she gave me the formal information via email. She uh, sent me the letter, the pre-approval letter. So that began and started my process, right? So that particular mortgage loan, if you know anything about lending, there was, it was a conventional loan, which typically conventional loans, you have to have like a really good credit score. I'm talking about 700s, right? Uh, or at least 680. And then you would have to have uh, that particular program had the, it's called the ACORN program, which allowed you to have no PMI, which is private mortgage insurance that's tacked onto your mortgage payment. That's huge. This had conventional loan. You see how God was already setting the stage for me to be able to afford it. Um, the down payment, I think, what did she say? Um, there was still a down payment. But the down payment wasn't the typical 5% down for conventional loans. At that time, the percentage down was 5%. I think this down payment was only 3%, which was unheard of. So it was a uh, cheaper down payment. I'm just trying to make sure I, I get this right. Uh, yeah, cheaper down payment. Um, and it was, uh, what else? Let's see, it's the ACORN program, no PMI. Um, and the credit score did not have to be high for a conventional loan. Typically, FHA allows a lower credit score if you go a FHA route. But I went, that was a conventional loan. That was unheard of, guys. So the prerequisites was to just take a first-time home buyer's course. And I think that was pretty much it. And your income, was it an income thing? Yeah, it was an income thing. Your income had to be a certain amount. So I said, okay, so I went forward, got my pre-approval letter. So now God is dealing with me. I was going to model homes and they asked me, was I working with a real estate agent? At that time in 2002, I didn't get my license until 2010. So I was like, no, I'm not working with a real estate agent right now. You know, I'm just uh, uh, looking. And so um, that's a win-win for the model home agent because now they don't have to split the commission and it's probably a little bit more percentage rise on their end. But then some kind of way it got brought past me that through someone either via TV or someone talking to me saying, don't go look at a home without a real estate agent because they are going to be, you know, 
the agent that's going to be representing you versus the one in the builder is going to be representing the builder. So I like the home. I like the one at the lake that I saw, whatever, whatever. But um, when I got, found my real estate agent via internet, I just kind of scowled around. And again, led by the Holy Spirit, I found this amazing agent. She was amazing. And because um, I heard, had heard the horror stories from my sister, had she had to fire one of her real estate agents because that agent kept taking her and run down homes. It's amazing. People, you, you have to know that the Holy Spirit leads you. And God blessed her with an amazing agent. But the first agent only took her to ran down in old homes. And the agent, <laughs> it's, it's like you just have to know and be led by the Spirit of God. That's all I can say. And I thank God my sister was saved and was led by the Spirit of God because God ended up you know, telling her to, to let that agent go. That was the enemy trying to put her in ugly, ran down things. And God, the one he put her with, she ended up getting a beautiful home and same price. So the agent was typically just taking her to ran down homes. So anyway, I said all of that to say just pray about everything and let God lead you even in that aspect. So then um, fast forward back to me. So back to me, um, God gave me a word of wisdom and I chose a, a good real estate agent. And so she began to take me around. She asked me, had I been pre-approved? I said, yeah, I've been pre-approved with Bank of America. She was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So she was like, well, how much was your pre-approval for? And I was like, it was for 135000 at the time. And she was like, oh, okay, so let's go look at home. So we went on our journey to go look at homes. And then she said to me, she said, do you want a big home or do you want a home that you can resell that's more it's smaller, but it's more valuable. You know, it's something that you know you can resell with no problem. I said, I want value. I don't want just a big white chalkboard square house and it's cheap. I want something that's got some substance to it, you know, that I know that holds its value really good. She said, okay. So we went around and we looked at homes. The first one I didn't really like. The second one, um, it was it was good. They were both brand new homes. Was, she said, do you want new construction or do you want resale? I said, I want new. I want brand new house. So that's what she took me to. So the third subdivision she took me to, we looked at the model home. And as soon as I walked into the home, I said, oh, my God, I love it. And she's like, you like it? I was like, yeah. I, I said, well, how much is it? She says, 147 I said, oh my goodness. She said, but what one thing I do like about this builder is you can take this same plan and um, you can probably build it in another subdivision because that's the kind of builder it was, you know, uh, maybe a cheaper you know, lot or something like that. So she said, let's go to the um, model home and talk. So we went to the model home and talk and I'm telling you from the beginning to the end. So we went when we went to the model home, she said, um, the lady told me, she said, um, she was like, oh, it's out of your price range. Well, how much was you pre-approved for? And I was like, 135. She's like, oh, yeah, they started at 147. And I was like, okay. She, she said, but we have another um, subdivision that you can go look in. She said, they're cheaper and you can probably build the same plan, but it won't be, you know, a four bedroom, which is the letter. In the letter, I told God I wanted a four bedroom. It'll probably just be a three bedroom. I said, well, that's fine. It's just me and my son anyway. So that's cool. And so we'll go look at that. And then she said, hold on, let me make a phone call. So she made the phone call and she said, I'll get back to you. She said, I put a call in with the builder. Let's see what they say. I said, well, I don't think they're going to come down, you know, that much, you know, but let's see. I didn't say that. I'm just saying it to myself, you know, but you know, in the meantime, in between time, we went to the other subdivision just to look and whatever. So then she called me, the lady called me from the model home and she said, the sun is shining on you. She said, because I take that back. The house was 159 guys. My apologies. 147 is what I paid. So she said, the house is 159. She said, call Bank of America to see what your highest, you know, price point could be because my lender gave me um, the midpoint, you know, not the lowest point, but the midpoint. She said, call and see what they, if they can approve you for, what they approve you for. So I said, okay. So I called Bank of America and I told the loan officer, I said, hey, you know, this house I'm looking at is this amount. And she was like, well, the highest you can go is 147 and that's at the very max. I was like, oh, so the house is still 159. 
So I said, okay, well, the lady told me to call and find out. So I called the um, agent back at the model home and I told her. She said, okay, let me see what they can do. She, now it wasn't like the houses weren't selling, right? So she was like, the builder said he'll do it. He'll, he said he'll come down from 159 to 147. I was like, what? She said, girl, the sun is shining on you because they don't normally do that. She said, you know, she said, but he said he'll do it. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So I was super excited. That was one thing that I got past. That was supernaturally done. How God, you know, the Bible says the heart of the king is in the hand of God. And the rivers and water, like rivers and water, he turns it whichever way he wants to turn it. So when God's favor is on you, it doesn't matter what the price is. It doesn't matter what people say. Still favor, favor. With favor, you don't need money, right? So the real estate agent was blown away. She was like, they did what? I was like, yeah, she said that they'll, they'll do it at 147. She said, oh my God, that's amazing. That's a win-win for her because now her, uh, you know, commission is higher. So then um, the next process started and the next process was start the process, down payment and closing costs. So she told me that I would need, well, Bank of America told me that I would need a down payment of at least 3%. So I would need that in addition to my closing cost. Now, the builder told me that if I got the uh, financing done through him, if I got the financing done through him, that he would actually uh, pay closing costs, right? 5000 in closing costs. And so I was like, okay, but I'm already approved with Bank of America. She was like, well, if Bank of America approve you, they approve you. But see, Bank of America was the blessing, right? So even though I got approved with Bank of America, that was because they had a special program going at the time and they allowed a lower credit score and they allowed, you know, I had a few collections on there as well. And I'm going to tell y'all about that. So after that, I called um, the builder and I went ahead and went through their lending process and they denied me. But the, but the catch is if I still apply with them and they denied me, they would still take the outside lender who approved me, but I would still get the closing costs. So I secured the 5,000 in closing costs with the builder because I had to apply anyway. And even though they didn't approve me, they still gave it to me. So I still got the 5,000 in closing. I said, okay, cool. That's, that's, that's amazing. So then I was like, oh my gosh, now I need the down payment, right? So now I had to come up with thousands of dollars more, you know, for the down payment, which I did not have guys. So I was like, okay, so I'm going to save my money because I'm living with my sister. So she didn't have me pay anything. You know, I just saved, saved up, you know, some money or whatever. But that money uh, that I saved up didn't cover much. And I'm going to tell you what happened. So what ended up happening is I went um, through the building process. Now, this was a brand new construction. Meanwhile, the process has started. My house is being built, right? It's being built. So I'm... Um, um, an ex that I was dating at the time that turned out to be a counterfeit, right? This was an ex. Um, we never, it never really got off the ground, but uh, it was a counterfeit that the enemy sent me. But at that time when we were talking and dating, I actually, he went to a program and paid like two, $2,500 for this grant book. So he paid $2,500 for this grant book. And so before we broke up, I had the book. And so... Um, I didn't think to look in the book because I just told him I wanted to scam, scam through the book. But by the time I started my home process, I was no longer with him, but I still had the book. And so my mom was like, um, well, how much is your down payment? And I was like, well, they said I have to put a thousand dollars down first, you know? And so mom was like, well, you are first time home buyers. They got to have some kind of programs for first time home buyers. And when she said that it clicked, she said, so look around for a first time home buyer stuff. I said, okay. And when she said it, something clicked in me, look in that grant book. So I went in the grant book and I went to the home, first time home buyer section in this grant book that he paid $2,500 for. And I found the grant, the Federal Home Loan Bank of Atlanta. I found, the, I found a grant. But the catch was your bank has to be participating in that program in order for it to work. So Bank of America had to be participating uh, in the program to partner with the Federal Home Loan Bank for me to get that. And then I had to fit into the criteria to actually get that. So this was nobody but God, step by step, right? So I didn't even have the thousand to put down. And my mom was like, I will FedEx you the check. 
for that. And she get, she FedExed me a check for 500 and I think I took $500 of my own money. So I put that down, right? So, and I'm gonna tell you how I even got, you know, God even gave some of that back. So I was like, okay, so my mom gave me the 500 and I put 500, so I was able to put the thousand down, but I still needed some thousands more for my down payment. So I found the grant, I called the Federal Home Loan Bank myself, and I asked them, was Bank of America a part of that program? And they said, let's look on our list. So I looked on the list. They looked on the list and they said, yes. Bank I said, oh my gosh, Bank of America is a part of it. So I called my loan officer and I said, hey, I see that you guys are participating in this grant program. And, uh, you know, I said, and she said, well, let me look into it and I get back to you. So she said, yeah. She says, she says so let's just submit the grant. So now it went from the builder paying 5000 in my closing costs to... Um, the down payment is now taken care of supernaturally. So this was nobody but God moving throughout this entire process. So throughout the process, I would go over there and people from the church would go and we would uh, anoint the dirt and pray in circles and pray over the land and pray over the house as it was being built. I would just go by and look, look at the house and, and it was just a really exciting time, you know. And so as I would go over there like every other weekend or so, cause it took like five months for them to build a house. So I would go over there from every other weekend and throughout that process, I started noticing because I was allowed to pick my brick. The, and, and, and granted, I was just getting a brick accent and the rest was siding. So that was what's included in my price. So I was able to uh, pick the brick and the motor that goes on in, in the brick in the trimming. I was able to pick the cabinets, the color of the countertops and all that good jazz, right? So I picked all that stuff out. And so as I would see the process, I kept looking at the brick as they started putting the brick on the front of the house. And I seen the whole house, I mean, like the front of the house, the whole thing bricked. So then I was like, that's not the color brick I chose. It's ugly. So it was so ugly to me because, you know, when they build and everything looks sloppy and dirty, right? And so I said, that's not the motor I picked, right? So I went back to the builder and I told them, I said, hey, there's something wrong with the color of that brick. I did not pick that. And by the time I saw it, the whole front was bricked. And I was like, okay. So she said, well, let me look at your uh, contract. So, you know, everything's in the contract. She looked at the contract and she said, oh, wow, we, we made an error. That's not the color that you picked. That's an error. So they would have had to pull all that brick off of there and redo the brick over but God told me as I pulled up, I said, I kept saying to myself, God would not let them do this to me. God would not let them do this to me. I kept saying, there has to be more there. So here's the wisdom of God. Well, you don't have money for a washer and dryer. You don't have your garage door opener. You don't have money for a refrigerator. So negotiate this. These are the strategies God was giving me. And don't get mad about it. This is exactly what God was telling me because I was really upset. And he's like, don't get mad about it. Use it as an opportunity to get more things. Now, my real estate agent didn't tell me this. When I called her and told her, she was like, oh my God, let me email them or whatever, whatever. But then God gave me a strategy. So when I went to the office, the model home, and I visited it and I said, hey, you guys gave me the wrong color brick. And I know they didn't want to pull all them bricks off of there and redo that all over again, right? I said, but I will be willing to deal with the color of the house on a few conditions. And she said, well, what is it? I said, I, I want the refrigerator, washer and dryer, and the garage door opener included. And I can deal with the color of the brick. I just deal with it. That's, that's what's going to have to be, you know? So she said, well, let me get back to you about that. So some days went by and she called me. She said, the sun must be shining on you. She said, the builder said he'll do it. I was like, oh my God. So now I'm moving in the house. I didn't have to have anything, right? But the only thing that my lender told me that I would need is the $300 or $400 um, for my homeowner's insurance. So I, I kept that little three or $400 in my account because I know that's what I would need at the closing table. So time went on and they built in the house and I was able to get my washer dryer, refrigerator, garage door opener. All those things would not have come with the house, right? So I negotiated that and my real estate agent was just like, girl, now I didn't know years later I would become a real estate agent, you know, but I was doing all my own negotiation even then. 
So God was just putting it in my heart, what to do, what to say, and just downloading wisdom, you know, so that when I moved into the house, I wouldn't have to worry about that. So the next thing that happened, um, my job was um, dissolving it, the division that I was in, right? So the division that I was in was um, they were going to, we were going to be getting severance checks and just being let go. But because God saw fit for me to be, you know, still at that job and I needed that job, you know, to get that house, the senior vice president came by. At that time, I was just a receptionist. And because of the ministering that I was doing to, I really, truly and wholeheartedly believe this, God just moved supernaturally. Because of the ministry that I was doing in the place as a receptionist, I was sitting there and then I would actually uh, minister to people and I minister to people to not to steal because what their plans was, the accounting department was planning to steal um, and steal thousands, tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, and, and put accounts and checks in their name. And I kept crying and telling them, please don't do this. Y'all going to go to jail. The enemy is trying to just trying to set y'all up. And I actually talked them people off the ledge. The whole accounting department was in on it. They was going to do checks. They was going to do the whole kit and caboodle. And what God did in that moment, instead of me, um, being laid off, the senior vice president and the other division came by my desk and said, Hey, Pat, um, we have a position opening up. Uh, Beth is leaving and we need an administrative assistant on this side. And I think you and Janine, who was the executive assistant at the time, I think you guys will work good together. He said, let me know if you're interested in, um, you know, what are they giving you over here? So I told him what was happening that they was, but I was going to be getting a severance of like $7,000 and blah, 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 blah. So make a long story short, they end up offering me the job. So now I was able to stay with my company. I ended up staying with that company for 11 years, being promoted even after that. And what ended up happening was I was able to go, instead of being laid off, still had a job. And then what they did was they compensated me the 7,000 that I was gonna get, an additional 7,000 a year to compensate for the money that I would have been missing out on had I gotten laid off. It was nobody but God. So anyway, fast forward back to the house. So I needed that because I needed to have a job, right? To have a house. So God at, uh, supernaturally moved in that in that way. So the next thing was the down payment and closing costs. I told you that he had that covered, right? And so the mishaps and the hiccups was like God showed me was only smoke screens. They're going to be smoke screens in your life. The enemy is going to try to pretend like the things that God has promised you is not what it really is. And there are going to be things that come against you opposition, but God wants me to let you know today it's only a smoke screen because when his favor is on you, the enemy can't take it. You have to come out of agreement with God into agreement with the enemy in order for the enemy to take anything from you. And when God has favored you, nobody can curse you. So I'm here to tell you that those hiccups and those things was nothing but merely a smoke screen. But because I repositioned my emotions and repositioned myself and allowed God to work through it, it was a blessed situation that even though the enemy meant it for bad and I was like, oh my God, I didn't pick that, you know, but God said, wait a minute, it's, it, I kept saying it has to be something more to this. God wouldn't just do that. I kept saying, God wouldn't just do that. And then that's when, because I was open to that, he started to give me the wisdom and the downloads. So what ended up happening was the icing on the cake, guys, and I'm ending it here. The icing on the cake was the closing table. So we get to the closing table and at the closing table, they said that I needed an additional $1,300. And immediately at the closing table, the, the realtor was just sitting there and I was like, $1,300? I said, that is not what my lender told me. My lender told me I only need three or $400, you know, for the homeowner's insurance. And the attorney was standing there and he was like, well, you need $1,300. And I, I, guys, I didn't have it. So he said, get Bank of America on the phone. So we in the closing room calling Bank of America to call the loan officer that told me that. So when I called to speak to her, I said, yes, my speak to Jennifer. They said, Jennifer is no longer with Bank of America. She's not, she's no longer with the company. In five months span, she was gone. I didn't even know it. It was right before my closing. And so he's, he stood there with his hands on his hips, the attorney, and just shook his head. He was like, 
You can't get money back at the closing. You have a grant. You can't get that money back. And they haven't wired the funds over here yet for the closing anyway. You know, but we know Bank of America is good for it. So we're not worried about that. He said, but you can't get money back. I said, I did not ask. Me and him was going back and forth. I said, I'm not asking for anything back. He's, he walked out of the room and then he came back into the room. And I said, I, you know what? I said, I can take it or leave it. I said it just like that. I said, I don't have to have this house. Y'all built, the, the house is already built. I don't own it. I said, I got a place to stay. I'm not pressed. You know, I said, I can take it or leave it. I said, I don't have to have it. I said, I know what she told me. So he walks out again and he comes back. He said, well, what do you want to see happen today? He said, because you can't get money back. I said, I'm not asking you for uh, anything back. I said, I'm just asking you. For, I want my keys to my house. I'm just looking to close on my home. And so he said, let me send this back into the paralegal and let her redo the numbers and paperwork. We're closing today. My relative looked at me like, what just happened? I said, I told him and I, and I told the attorney, I said, you got 5,000 in closing costs. I got a $5,000 grant. You got a thousand dollars down. This is exactly what I told him. I said, that's $11,000. This closing paper says 7,000 and some change. Why are you asking me for an additional $1,300? And then that's when he walked out and redid the paperwork and came back. In other words, I didn't need all that money. I had an overflow of, of, of money, of finances. So, I, so he was just asking me for more money because he's, a lot of times at the closing table, guys, people want things so bad, right? This is what God was showing me in all of this. Because we want things so bad, we're willing to concede with the enemy. We're willing to compromise, right? If God said it, he shall perform it, right? Above and beyond what we could ever ask or think because that three or $400 that I had for my homeowner's insurance, they included that in. So now that 500 that I put down of my own money because my mom gave me the other 500 and now that was pretty much wiped out. So really I walked into the house with $100 or whatever. God is amazing and I'm here to tell you that because I'm testifying and how he works, right? And how he does things, he wants to do it again. This may not be your story exactly, but God wants you to know, don't concede and don't compromise your blessings. Because if he showed you something, no matter what smoke screens go, are going to come up, because just because God is blessing you, right? And he's got the favor on you. That doesn't mean you're not going to have opposition. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But if you stand fast on the word and if you stand strong and you don't concede and you don't compromise, God's words will be established among your life. And this is the testimony that's going to help somebody. And it's going to help somebody throughout their process that even though you, this may not be your exact process, you're going to know the smoke screens. You're going to be able to identify and you're going to be able to not only um, um Posture yourself in a position that you can receive from God instead of getting getting our emotions all tied up with things. Sometimes emotions will have you to miss God, right? If I had got emotionally tied to this house, right? Remember, I, this is a five month process. Most people are emotionally tied, and thirteen hundred dollars is not a lot for some people to come up with. I've seen just recently this guy; he came up with thirteen thousand dollars. Even though he wasn't supposed to pay the thirteen thousand, but he wanted to close so bad, he gave them an additional thirteen thousand dollars. And the reason being is because he, the house that he had, did not appraise for what they was asking for. So technically, he could have went back to the closing table if he had a good real estate agent and renegotiated those numbers and told them that he was just not going to buy the house. But because he just he was tired of looking for a house, he went ahead and gave them thirteen thousand dollars, and that he didn't even have, the equity wasn't even there. This was just recently this summer. And I told my sister, if I was his real estate agent, not only would he have not paid the $13,000, but he would not, he would have got, he would have gotten something even more back. So I'm just here to tell you, don't compromise and don't back up and don't retreat when the enemy blows smoke screens, when God is blessing you and when God is giving you things, because if God said it, you can stand on it, you can count on it. His word would not return void and it accomplished everything that he sent it to do. When God told my pastor that he, I would see the glory of God explode in my life. God's glory is attached to financial favor. And you have to know that's, that, that to me is what what happened. So I know that that was attached to what he said because nothing else happened besides that. My house was the, the biggest thing that was happening at that time. 
So again, I didn't pray for a house. I didn't ask for a house. But how many of you know that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him? Don't let nobody talk you out your blessing. Don't let nobody say that, you know, you shouldn't be chasing after money. It's not about chasing after money. It's about obedience and it's about following God and it's about favor. God says, <clears throat> that he will give you the wealth of the Gentiles. And I'm here today to tell you that God will arise over you and every enemy be scattered and every smoke screen has to clear and dissipate by the power and the blood of Jesus. That is the testimony. That is what I, God blessed me with my first house. I will be back on here again to um, give you the testimony whenever he say so, you know, of the second house. And I'll keep get, providing information via YouTube shorts. So guys, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Um, turn on that notification bell because I'm still going to be laying out a ton of wealth of information as I do have a real estate license and a mortgage license and I'm an interior decorator and I'm going to be providing you guys with any information in the comments. Leave a comment. If you have a comment and you want to know about a certain particular issue or situation pertaining to the real estate transaction from the beginning to end, leave a comment and I will answer your questions or do videos on your questions. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for your support and thank you for subscribing to my channel. I love you. Not with the love of Christ. I just love you and you have a great day. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Bye loves.